It is Halloween again, and that can only mean one thing. Uh, we're gonna bottle up some candy. Last year we went for a more traditional Halloween approach and we did a caramel apple, candy corn, and malted Whoppers. But when we aim to replicate flavors that are just rich and sweet, we tend to run into trouble. Since kombucha does have an inherent sourness, if you try to mask that, and the only thing left to mask it with is sweetness, it tends to be very imbalanced and not very interesting. So this year I'm aiming for candies that have at least some sour component to them, generally just citric acid. This week I'm going with Skittles, Sour Patch Kids, Mike and Ike, Starburst, Airheads, and Swedish Fish. But first, let's get our kombucha ready. I was also hoping for candies that had at least some distinctiveness to their flavoring. Because if we add a bunch of lemon Starburst to our kombucha, we want to make sure that it tastes like lemon Starburst kombucha. We don't want it to just taste like lemonade, because otherwise we would just use a real lemon. And I'm gonna start with what I think is gonna be the easiest to process, and that's gonna be our Swedish fish. And while it might seem strange, uh, from what I've calculated out, I think I want about 29 grams of each candy, which is gonna have varying levels of sugar, but just since they are candies that have varying levels of sugar, I think it's only fair to hold true to that in the bottle. And for each of these, I'm just going to dice them as fine as possible. Okay. Swedish fish do not dice. And then I'm gonna let them steep in the bottle, in the refrigerator for several days, just so they can impart that flavor. And this was just a warm up because the next stage is a blender. The more we process this candy, the more is gonna be exposed to the kombucha, so the more flavor will be imparted. So I want to vaporize this. I think for the first time ever, my Vitamix has failed to break this down even a little bit. I didn't know that was possible, but I think we just might have to accept that this is as broken down as it gets. Bottle number one is complete. Next up, we've got Mike and Ike. I'm gonna aim for just the green and yellows if I can. Although I'll say anything is acceptable except for the strawberry that absolutely should never have been included. I'm still uh, quite easily triggered anytime I think about it. And once more, I'm gonna give them a quick chop first. My poor knife. Smells okay. Yeah, they're not entirely broken down, but I feel like we'll do okay just since they're gonna have that prolonged soak. I think we'll still have a chance to get plenty of flavor out. And that's bottle number two. Next up, I've got Sour Patch Kids. And this time I'm gonna try to go for all blue because when that's an option, it is always the best option. Every time with one of these shows, I try to at least just learn one thing, make one improvement. And I feel like the thing we learned this time is that candy does not blend well. And that's bottle number three. Next up, we've got Starburst. And this time I'm going with purely strawberry and lemon. With, I think, more lemon than strawberry. I feel like I would be more likely to eat Starburst if I didn't have to individually unwrap every single one. This is why I've always been a Starburst jelly bean man. Just as far as shoveling it in your face goes, it's the far most efficient route. These are gonna blend so poorly. 
It's like they don't want you to blend it up into a kombucha. These all still smell very strongly of the candy. Bottle number four. Next up, we've got Airheads. And I immediately take back what I said because uh, there are blues and it is not the best. White's the best. If you are unaware, it is the combination of all the other leftover flavors. So it's uh, cherry, blueberry, and watermelon. Why does every candy make me open it individually? It's actually much easier to tear up than I thought. This one kind of smells strange. As if chalky white taffy was poured inside. And that's bottle number five. And finally, we've got Skittles, which uh, out of respect for the candy, we're just gonna include all the flavors of the rainbow. And I think the best option here is just to crush them each. One fun thing is that most of the candy has completely lost its color. That's disgusting colorless bubbles in case you can't see it. And once all of these are bottled, I'm just gonna put them in the fridge for three days and then we're gonna strain them, top them off, and maybe adjust the sugar, but uh, I'll see you then. Now that a few days have passed, we just have the fairly monotonous task of straining all these out, topping them back off, and then trying to adjust the sweetness to taste. And I had kind of hoped that that extended stay in the fridge would give the acid enough time to dissolve all of that sugar goop, but uh, apparently not the case. We're gonna start with our Swedish fish. Perhaps not the most appetizing pieces that we're left with, but don't eat those. Uh, this is a little too sweet, but I think that's exactly where we want it to be. And I'm going to top it off with some plain kombucha, just so that we have a full bottle, because that's going to help with carbonation. So that's our Swedish fish. Next up, we have our Mike and Ike. They all take on the, the weirdest texture, kind of like a, uh, it's like an unripe dragon fruit. It's really good though. That tastes uh, very similar to a lemonade. And I also don't think we're gonna need sugar there. Next, we have our Sour Patch Kids. With a color that is not more appealing, and I am going to uh, stop tasting these bits left over. It does taste like blue. Next up, we have our Starburst which has a fairly thick layer of grit there. And it's a very kind of fine mud-like grit in there. So I think I'm gonna use this nut milk bag to try and strain it a little finer. does at least smell exactly like Starburst. So that's bottle number four. Next up we have Airheads, and I think this is another one that's gonna benefit from some finer straining, because there is a lot of chalky grit. And this white residue that was left 
It doesn't look like it, but it actually became kind of like a buttery smear when I tried to remove it. I had to wash the bottle off with soap to get rid of it. It was very odd. You can tell it's much harder to strain as well. I think just because that gross paste just kind of coated the inside of this bag. Tastes exactly like white Airhead though. And finally, we've got our Skittles, which looks like it's going to be another slimy one. Ooh, that's not a good looking paste. Yeah, somehow, whatever's left, it's just very greasy. I had to fully scrub down the bottles with soap just to get it out. It is noticeably more opaque as well. That's a handful of Skittles in a bottle here. So that's all six of our bottles. Now I'm just going to give them three days at 78 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we'll be ready to taste them properly. All right, we are back and we are ready to enjoy the spoils of our Halloween. And I've been wondering a little bit about that white grease I found all over the bottles on our last three. And at first I kind of thought that might be the vegetable wax that's sometimes used to polish up candy like jelly beans or Skittles. But I don't think that would be enough to account for how much of it I saw. So I think it's more likely to be a mixture of cornstarch and oil when the candy didn't have enough gelatin to keep that all together. That's my best theory. So we are going to start with our Swedish fish. And these all have enough sugar that I don't think they're going to get great carbonation, but they should have some carbonation. A little bit of a reddish hue. It smells like a bag of Swedish fish. It's perfect. No, it's too sweet. Never mind. The flavor is perfect. It's a notch too sweet. Which is worrying because I did all of these in order of how much sugar they have. Swedish fish being the least. There's really not much to be said about it. It's liquefied Swedish fish and it just tastes like a hint of acid afterwards. It's carbonated. It's just uh, exactly as advertised. It is a Swedish fish kombucha. I don't think I would want to adjust the flavor at all or the acidity, but I would want less sugar there. And that becomes a bit of a tricky situation because we didn't add any sugar other than the candy itself. And if we add less of the candy, we're going to get less of the flavor. I think this might be one of the extremely rare occurrences where I would consider burping the bottles. Uh, if you don't know, burping is when you release the carbonation while you're trying to build carbonation. So I typically don't think it makes any sense at all. But in this case, I think there might be a role for it because it would give us a chance to burn off more sugar without losing any of the flavor. And then I would also just want to give it more time because kombucha tends to struggle with carbonation when you're adding just pure plain sugar as opposed to something simpler like a fruit juice. But if you're looking for a Swedish fish kombucha, uh, I think this is the way to go. Next up, we've got our green and yellow Mike and Ike. Looks like a slightly greener tinged version of kombucha. Smells like sort of a lemonade limeade. It kind of just tastes like a lemonade or limeade or even a Sprite. There's more acid than the Swedish fish had, and there's definitely a prominent lemon-lime flavor. I'm not sure it's better than a lemonade or limeade, and it's not distinctly a Mike and Ike, but uh, I won't struggle to drink it. Next up, we've got our Blue Sour Patch Kids. Uh, that's a worse color. It smells exactly like a Sour Patch Kid. Oh my god, it's like a mouthful of blue. This should, I'm not even kidding, this should be on store shelves. This is wonderful. I would change nothing except I would add blue food dye to this because I think that would make it amazing. Yeah, this is the best thing I've made in a while. If you want to drink a bunch of blue Sour Patch Kids in a kombucha, absolutely make this. 
And if you don't, just know that any of our flavor recommendations here aren't going to line up with your taste because clearly we're on very different pages. Next up is Starburst, and I believe I used the yellow and pink ones, so we'll see how that turns out. Uh, I just know that they are going to be disappointing in light of what we had before. Uh, much more opaque, and I poured a lot more than I wanted to drink. I would say it's distinctly Starburst, though. Uh, I mostly get the pink Starburst, which I am guessing is some sort of strawberry. Oh, yeah, this is exactly a Starburst. Having had probably my body weight in Starburst jelly beans, uh, this is exactly it. I would be able to pick this flavor out of anything, I think. A hint too sweet and not carbonated enough, so almost there. It's still quite good, and I don't really want to drink this whole glass because it, it's a lot to drink at once. This flavor is almost too much. I think I could actually dial back on the candy for this one. It's a little strong, and uh, as appropriate to the holiday, now my belly kind of hurts because I had too much candy. Next up is our white mystery airheads. And it smells like a white mystery airhead, but uh, there is a little bit of that kombucha funk there at the bottom. I think most of that flavor is coming from the scent of it because the flavor is just sort of a standard kombucha. Perhaps a little bit sweeter than usual, but uh, it's mostly all in the aroma of it. Not that it's a bad thing, it's just less prominently that candy compared to the other ones we tried. And the aftertaste as you breathe out comes back too. So it's probably the most muted of the flavors, even though it's still very clearly there. It's probably also just the one that'd be the least strange if you accidentally picked it up and drank it without knowing what it is. But it's a better sweet and sour balance, so I feel like it's going to be the least confusing one of these to drink. Let's try the last. And finally, we've got our Skittles. Quite opaque. Uh, it looks like there's a rainbow in there. It smells like a bag of Skittles. It tastes like I just ate a mouthful of Skittles. There is a good amount of acid, but uh, again, it's just a little bit too sweet to be something I would want to drink a whole glass of. There is a thicker mouthfeel to it as well, but uh, very clearly in the smell and the taste, this is a bag of Skittles. So, what did we learn? What did we take away from all this? As far as flavor goes, I think this technique works perfectly. Smash up some candy, put it in a bottle of kombucha, and definitely strain it out because that was some nasty stuff I pulled out of there. And I think it would be worth testing again to see, is it worth it to burp the bottles and go an extra four or five days? Or should we just sacrifice a little bit of that flavor to use less candy? I could see both of them potentially working, but uh, perhaps we'll save that for next Halloween. Overall though, I would call this a win because all of our flavor came through and we are almost dead on. It's just a notch too sweet. And for a first try and throwing bags of candy into kombucha, I think that's not too bad. But we learned a little bit today, so I think that's good enough. Let me know if you have any other candies you want to try. Otherwise, thank you for watching. This is Reckless Booch.